What NRA defends, I believe, is as old as this country itself. I mean, the fact the Bill of Rights, the Second Amendment, I mean, people wanted to be free then, they want to be free now. There were bad guys then, people wanted to protect themselves, there are bad guys now. I mean, the truth is, self-defense has been around as old as civilization. We're defending the right of law-abiding people to defend themselves. Well, your shoot first, ask questions later. What you're really talking about is the Castle Doctrine bills, which say, which... Well, uh, hey, I support every one of the Bill of Rights. I believe they're what separates our country from every other country in the world. But those Castle Doctrine bills, what they simply say is if you're a homeowner and some criminal breaks your glass at 2 a.m. at night and comes at you, you have a right to do what's necessary to save your life and your family. And, and the presumption is on your side that you have the right. Now, that doesn't mean it gives anybody the right to do something totally irresponsible. It's going to be reviewed by a jury. That's the way our country works. Yeah, by a pro well, hopefully you will be alive because you were able to take what actions were necessary when that criminal broke your glass at 3 a.m. in the morning and you're there all alone. You, you are, it's, it's you and the criminal. And you should never take away from the victim the right to defend yourself. I mean, that's what this is all about, the right of self-defense goes back to the core beliefs Americans believe in. I mean, if, if you don't believe that, I, I just simply say I think no, you're out of... Well, give me your question again. I don't yeah, understand. Don't have a I don't... Mr. LaPierre. Yeah. The logical extension of the current interpretation of the Second Amendment seems to support the open carry people. That is the right to walk around with a six-gun on your hip like they did in Dodge City back in the 1870s. Is this the view of the National Rifle Association? Is that a legal act to walk around showing your arm like they did in the old westerns? And if so, how does that contribute to the enhancement or betterment of civil society? You know, I think that this whole issue started with this Starbucks issue in the media, and I really think the whole thing's much to do about nothing. I mean, I, I wish the open carry, I believe people ought to be upset about and the media ought to be writing about, rather than somebody in Texas wants to walk into a Starbucks where it's perfectly legal for a law-abiding citizen to, to have a firearm like that. Uh, they ought to be concerned about the open care of these, as I've said earlier, these drug dealers, gang members, felons, that we leave on the street every day and nobody does anything about them. I mean, you know, yeah, the New York Times would make them like a big issue of the fact that 23 states allow open carry. It hadn't been a problem. It hadn't been an issue. You haven't had crime going on with law-abiding people because law-abiding people don't commit crime. And the criminals simply ignore every law you put on the book because that's what they are, criminals. So that's why I keep saying what every rank-and-file police officer on the street says. Confront the criminals, take them off the street, put the federal gun laws on a card. Every time you see one of them violating it, pick them up, prosecute them 100% of the time, and make people safe. I mean, it, that's what works. That's the only thing that works. And that's what the NRA is in favor of. We also have the best child safety programs in the country. Our Ed Eagle program, we spend millions a year on it. I hear other people talk about safety. We put millions a year into it. You know, we have child accidents in this country down to the lowest level ever, about 75. We can't rest until there are none. But a child today has one-tenth the chance of being involved in a firearms accident than his or her parents did. And it's because of the NRA dollars, the NRA program, uh, that we put into schools all over the country. And, I mean, we... we I mean, we're a safety training organization in addition to a Second Amendment organization. We have 11,000 police instructors, 100,000 safety and training instructors. We put millions into this Eddie Eagle program every year. We run thousands of competitions all over the country, and we defend the right of people to own a firearm under the Constitution, to protect themselves under the Constitution, and any bad guy that touches a gun Believe me, nobody has been a more forceful advocate of prosecuting them, taking them off the street, building the prisons, putting them in jail, and making people safe. And I believe that's why the American public supports the NRA, year in and year out in overwhelming numbers. Yes, ma'am. No, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, my foreign friends from Switzerland to 
uh, Singapore asked me, is gun violence a part of American culture? And our news media, as you pointed out, seem to support the, and in their reports on these subjects of the janitor fretting about an imminent uh, firing comes into the workplace and shoots uh, his fellow workers and kills himself. A child uh, is killed by a stray bullet from warring teens on her street. High school teens with weapons go into a high school, shoot up the staff and student friends. I think everyone in this room and most places in the United States are concerned that something must be done about gun violence. And I would have a suggestion I'd like you to respond to, that a high-profile presidential commission like the Warren and 9-11 commissions be formed with the charge to develop a plan to reduce the number of gun-related reports by 50% within a five-year period. With this high profile of the cloud of the NRA, would you agree to chair this commission? I believe I've chaired it for years with this program, Project Exile. I went down to Richmond. We put up billboards all over the city saying an illegal gun gets you five years in federal prison. If it's a drug dealer with a gun, it gets you 10 to 20 years. We cut crime in that city with guns by 70% the very first year. Everybody, every police officer in that city has stories. They catch a drug dealer. They go, where are the guns? The drug dealer goes, I don't have a gun. Exile. I don't want to go to prison. That's what works. NRA has been for three strikes. I went out and handed Mike Reynolds the first check in California for three strikes. We have been on the Hill for prison building. I have been on the Hill working with senators to get money for Project Exile and prosecutions all over the country. In terms of child safety, I've already said we've got accidents to the lowest level ever. Uh, but here's what we're not doing. We're not prosecuting 17, 18, 19, and 20-year-old gang bangers that everything they're doing with a gun is already illegal, and the laws are on the books to take them off the street. That's the type of stuff that makes people safe. Instead, you get the media and the politicians going, hey, one more gun law. I even did a, la a, 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 a commercial on that called The Laughing Criminal, where I recounted what happened to me in a state legislature where I kept saying what we need are prosecutors, what we need are, 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 are prisons, what we need is, is, is to take these guys, and they kept going, no, 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 look, this is all in the media now. Unless you can come up with some sound bite, we're going to vote for this gun control law. So I, I, I did a commercial based on that, ran on national television, called The Laughing Criminal, ended up throwing a beer can at the television set when he was laughing at the politician announcing one more gun law. We don't need one more gun law. We've got all the gun laws we need if we just enforce them against the bad guys. And that's what we're not doing. And the NRA, no one has been more forceful lobbying for mandatory sentences and all these other programs in the National Rifle Association. I mean, do we support paperwork, one more paperwork requirement on the honest citizen that only honest people are going to comply with and criminals will laugh? No, we don't. We want to protect the individual right of people to protect themselves and to own a firearm under the Constitution. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Lavier. Today at the City Club, we have been listening to a Friday forum featuring Wayne LaPierre, CEO and Executive Vice President of the National Rifle Association of America. Thank you, Mr. LaPierre. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This forum is now adjourned. For information on upcoming speakers or for podcasts of the City Club, go to cityclub.org.